Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal at Correspondent at Goal, joining you from the Emirates Stadium just a few minutes after Arsenal have been beaten 2-1 here by Wolves in yet another poor, poor performance from Mikel Arteta's side. Three home defeats on the, on the bounce now in the Premier League for Arsenal, following on from those defeats against Villa and Leicester. And they never looked like they getting anything from this game from the moment it kicked off, really. They were really, really poor. And... Um, and yeah, it's it's tough times for Arsenal right now. They find themselves 14th in the Premier League. They lost five games in, the, in their first 10 games. They've got, I think, 13 points, which is their lowest ever points tally after 10 games of a Premier League season. Mikel Arteta is the first manager to lose three home games in the league for Arsenal since Terry Neal in, I think, 1977 or something like that. The stats aren't great. The performances aren't great. It's um, yeah, it's beginning to get a little bit worrying right now. You kind of think back to that FA Cup when you think back to the end of last season, and the real clear signs of progress that Arsenal was showing under Arteta, and suddenly it's beginning to feel a long, long time ago. I mean, this was it's a year ago today that Unai Emery got sacked, and watching this one today you really do start to question, you know, what what has changed? I mean, this had all the hallmarks of those games, those last final sort of six weeks two months under Emery when it was just really really bad and this felt it just felt exactly like that no the midfield was wide open there was no midfield the defense was poor they were backing off the there was no link between the midfield and the attack um players were trudging around with their shoulders sort of you know shoulders and heads dropped there was body language was all wrong and um yeah, it's uh, Mikel Arteta's going to have to find a solution. Unai Emery couldn't find a solution a year ago, and he paid the ultimate price. And, you know, Mikel Arteta, he's not at that stage yet by any means. He's um, still got plenty of time left in the tank. I think the FA Cup win certainly um, gives him that little bit of breathing space, but he's got to come up with a solution to these problems pretty, pretty soon because Arsenal are looking very, very average. And, you know, they're 14th in the Premier League table, and that's exactly where they deserve to be at the moment. Yeah, they scored 10 goals, 10 goals. We've played 10 games. You think eight of those goals came in the first four games of the season. They scored two goals since then. They scored from open play finally today, ending a run of eight hours in the league without a goal from open play. But even that was all actually from a short corner. So the only reason it was open play was because they took the, shorter, the corner short before Willian crossed it in and Gabriel headed really good header. That, that cancelled out, um, uh, I think it was Neto's opening goal for, for Wolves. Um, but then opponents restored Wolves' leave and they were 2-1 up at half-time. Second half, Arsenal better. They rallied and they did put Wolves under a little bit more pressure, but they never really created a massive chance in that second half. And you know, Wolves, although they were under pressure, they looked pretty, pretty comfortable when Arsenal were just resorting to putting cross after cross in and hoping that someone was going to get on the end of it. And, and they didn't. Holding had one chance, which he headed over. Aubameyang had a sort of half chance, which he couldn't get on target. Saka had one, which he miscued after, I think it was a Bellerin cutback. But... Um, you yeah, know they huffed and they puffed Arsenal, but there's just a distinct lack of quality out there at the moment. I think mean, Thomas Partey cannot come back soon enough. He showed in the win at Old Trafford how transformative he can be for this Arsenal team and how much better they look when he's in the side and what he brings to the midfield um, in terms of protecting the defence, but also linking the attack. And without him, they just look very poor. He's back to a Xhaka and Sabios midfield today, and you know it's, it's perhaps understandable why we're seeing Arsenal look like the team they were under Unai Emery at the moment because. You know that's pretty much what they are. Minus today, they had Willian on the right, who did at least get an assist. First one since that win at Fulham on the opening day, but it was still pretty poor. He was replaced eventually by Reese Nelson. Gabriel obviously has certainly made a big improvement at the back. There's no doubt about that. Um, but they're still very much. They just look like a new Naomi side at the moment, and that's the worrying thing because Arteta has been in this job for a while now, and he's. St- and it's just not you would expect they could have really kicked on after what how they ended last season and even how they started this season with a couple of good wins but it's not happening and they just look shorn of confidence and I'll tell you, like I said he's got to find a solution to it there was a real worrying incident in this game I'm sure you've seen it David Luiz and Raul Jimenez having a sickening clash of heads early on in the first half Jimenez taken to hospital absolutely unconscious um, he's taken by ambulance you know, real concern here fair play to Wolves credit to Wolves for um the way they responded, their players just seen such a horrible moment for their teammate, and, and the way they responded and brushed it off and, and got the win, they deserve big, big credit for that. And, and real spotlight's going to fall on Arsenal's decision to carry on playing David Luiz because he got real, you know, he, he was involved in that clash of heads, cut his head wide open, he had a big bandage on it, but blood was seeping through the wound still in the, uh, and they kept him on until half time, and he was replaced by Rob Holden at half time. But you, you kind of felt 
why on earth did you leave him on the pitch? It wasn't like a leg injury where you're thinking, oh, get him to half time and see. It was a head injury and it was still bleeding. And, you know, I just, they're going to have to really justify that decision. I, I, I say we're still waiting. I'm looking down there now. Joe Willock's talking to the media and um, Nuno's down there to, uh, talking to the media as well. But Mikel Arteta hasn't come out yet. So he'll be speaking to the broadcast media and then he'll do his press conference with us and it'll be very interesting to see what he's going to have to say because he's certainly going to have to justify not just that performance but he's going to have to justify Arsenal's position to leave uh, decision to leave David Luiz on the pitch because it just looked really really odd especially given everything that's going on at the moment head injuries concussion it just it just seemed like an odd decision for me and um, yeah he's certainly going to have to justify that and he's going to have to justify this Arsenal performance as well because really really worrying signs here at the Emirates OK, let's get on to um, my player ratings from today's game. As you understand, you, I'm sure you will uh, predict they're not going to be very good for Arsenal players uh, across the board, really. This was a bit of a horror show. Um, so it's going to be pretty poor. Burnt Leno, I'll start with. We're going to give Leno a five. He certainly fumbled the second shot. It did take a slight deflection for the second goal, and um, he got a bit of... Uh, he got a bit of criticism after the... Um, uh, after that goal went in, so I was just trying to see, I was just looking down at the pitch, um, see what's going on. But he did, uh, yeah, he took a bit of criticism. He did take a slight deflection though, which I think maybe people didn't see initially, but still perhaps he could have done better. So I'm going to give Bernd Leno a five. David Luiz, he only played 45 minutes, so I'll give Luiz, I'll give Luiz a five as well. He did look shaken up, understandably so, by the head clash with Jimenez. Gabriel, he scored the goal. Um, Made a couple of good blocks, took a nasty one in the face as well himself in the second half. Actually, I'll give Gabriel a six. I'm going to give Tierney a, a six because at least he carried on going down that left-hand side as much as he could. Um, so I'm going to give him a six. I'll give Hector, Hector a five, I think. Um, the two midfielders, Xhaka and Ceballos, I thought Xhaka was dreadful. I really did. It was a really poor performance from Xhaka. Uh, I'm going to give, I'll give Xhaka a... I'll give Xhaka a four, I'll give Ceballos a four. I thought the pair of them, you know, it was really, really poor. The central midfield just offered nothing defensively and or going forward. It was just a bad night all round. And Joe Willock as well, he started again in the Premier League, but I thought Willock was poor, he didn't really offer anything. Um, makes you think, I mean, I don't want to keep, I don't want to bring Meza Ozil's name into this, but, you know, when you say he, Ozil's not playing for footballing reasons, yet you're watching Joe Willock play at number 10 in the Premier League and you had Lacazette play at number 10 in in the Europa League, it's, it's just not footballing reasons, is it? You can't sit here and say that Joe Willock is a Joe Willock or Alexander Lacazette is a better number ten than Mesut Özil. But look, that decision's been made, and I don't want to harp back and reopen that particular wound. But yeah, Joe Willock, I thought was poor. He's going to get a four as well. Willian at least did get an assist, um, first one since Fulham. I'll give Willian a uh, I'll give Willian a four. Saka, I thought had a really good chance in that second half. Was, I haven't seen the replay of it yet, but he totally miscued it. Um, but it wasn't a great night for Saka. I'm going to give I'll give Saka a five. And Bamiang I thought was really poor. He looked disinterested at times. I thought Bamiang. I don't normally say that about him, but he looked looked tired as well. He was, every time the camera showed him, he was puffing out his cheeks. And um, it was just a couple of times I thought he'd really sort of bust a gut trying to get in the middle, and he didn't on crosses. It was a strange performance I thought from from the skipper. Um, I think I'm going to give a Bamiang a four as well. In terms of the substitutes, it's tough to really mark them. They didn't really do much at all I mean when Rich Nelson came on he did that was a time when Arsenal started putting on a little bit more pressure perhaps he certainly offered a little bit more threat on the right hand side than Willian did I'll give Reese a five Rob Holding played the 45 minutes in the second half um, had good chance actually at the back post probably Arsenal's best chance of the game but um, couldn't keep his header down I'll give um, I'll give Holding a five and Lacazette came on for the last 10 minutes um, couldn't really get himself into the game at that point and uh, uh, so it's tough to give Lacquer a mark really probably be a little bit unfair to do so so really disappointing night here in North London for Arsenal and one I think we're going to have to wait and see what Mikel Arteta says like I said he's not come down to the media yet so um, I will pop on tomorrow and do another one of these videos sort of talking about exactly what Mikel Arteta had to say and going over this match and the fallout from it in a little bit more detail um, because I think that we're going to hear this certainly isn't going to be the end the last we're going to hear of this one so Arsenal finished tonight 14th in the Premier League 13 points from 10 games 10 goals from 10 games and with an awful lot of work to do it's finished here at the Emirates Arsenal 1 Wolves 2